Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. Today we will have our ninth lesson in a series of ten, at our penultimate lesson on the topic of homonyms. What are homonyms? We have learned it. Be we have learned it before. Homonyms are two words that have different spellings, they have different meanings, and yet for some inexplicable reason they are pronounced in the same manner. They have two different spellings, two meanings, two different meanings, but their, their pronunciation is the same. Let's begin. We are supposed to pick up from number 76. We are supposed to pick up from number 76, but we are going to talk about the pairs, two pairs that we learned, number 13 and number 33, I want to go back and visit them again because I think I made an error, I made a mistake when we were learning them in terms of pronunciation. So I want to clarify it, I want to, I want to make sure that we understand it. So here are, here are the two, here are the, here's the first pair. Of course this is pronounced hair as in hair and here's another one. Again the same thing, hair, same exact pronunciation. But this is hair as in bunny rabbit. Hair as in rabbit. And here's 33, which is, of course, which is pronounced here. Here, here, and here. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not homonyms, as you can see. I think I made a mistake last time. Now this here. This here right now, come here, is, has the same pronunciation as this here. Here. Same exact pronunciation as you can see. I cannot hear you. Please speak, speak up a little bit. I cannot hear you. Don't speak from, don't speak, don't speak to me from way over there. Come here. Because I cannot hear you. You see? Hominus. Let's carry on. So now we're going to pick up from where we left off in the previous lesson, number 8. The last word we did was number 75. So today we're going to pick up from number 76. 76, again, a straightforward pair, nothing to it. Your, which is a common mistake you see all the time, people don't pay attention. And this one here, which is the contraction of, which is the contraction of, you are. This is the contraction of you are instead of writing you are as two, two different words, two separate words like I am well actually I am will have the same pronunciation as I am whether you write it or, or, or here, here's another one this one has the same pronunciation as this one his and his when you speak, uh, when you speak uh, uh, fast your and your, they have the same, you, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming. That's not this your, this is this, this is a contraction of you are. Instead of saying you are coming, sometimes the natives when they're speaking, when they're speaking fast, it sounds like they're saying you're coming. What they're saying is you are coming, which is, which turns out to be a homonym of this word. Just like his and his. Let's move on, number 77. Number 77. See what we have there. Number 77 is a tricky one a little bit. Here is the word pain as in as in to feel pain. I feel pain. I don't feel well. Uh, I feel pain in my in my joints or in my in my bones or whatever it is that you have pain. And here is this pain. P-A-N-E which is of course the same pronunciation pain. Of course uh, we don't have to write it. Of course there's the same pronunciation that's why they call homonym. This pain as in as in a window. And the window has several different uh, glasses, uh, sections of glasses, and those are called pain, window panes. Do you understand? Let's move on. Number 78. Number 78, that's not what I meant to erase. So one more time, this is a window pane, as in a piece of glass in a window. Window pane and that pane. Number 78. W-E-I-G-H. 
W E I G H is pronounced simply as way. Way, that's all, which is same pronunciation as this guy, W A Y, which is also pronounced way. Which way are you going? Which way is your house? Which way is your house? And this way is is how much how much do you how much do you weigh? To which the answer is I weigh I weigh a mere hundred kilo. What a poor guy. He needs to put on some meat. He weighs a mere hundred kilo. Or I weigh merely one hundred kilo. Weigh. Weigh and weigh. Number seventy nine. Number seventy nine. Number 79 is a bit tricky. I'll tell you why in a second. Here's the word. The word is root. Root as in of a plant. Of a plant. As you can see, it's a quite straightforward word, nothing to it. But the homono of this root, homono of this word, ha, the word that qualifies, the word that qualifies as the homono of this word, is this word right here, which, depending on which part of the world you are in, is pronounced two different ways. It is pronounced as this guy right here, which is simply root as you can see. And this has two different pronunciation. You can pronounce it as root, in which case they become homonyms. You can pronounce this word as root. Which root are you taking? Or it is also pronounced as Route, route and root. So depending on how you pronounce the word route and root, depending on how you pronounce it, if you happen to pronounce it as root, then it qualifies as a homonym of this root, root of a plant. Do you understand? Number 80. Number 80 is very straightforward, nothing to it. Weather, as in it's a nice weather today. The weather is very nice today. Nice weather today. Or, of course, this weather. W H E T H E R. W H E T H E R. Weather, as in, I can't decide whether to go or stay. I can decide. I can decide whether to sell my house or not. I can't make up my mind. Do you understand? Whether you're coming or not. We are definitely going to the movies. Let's move on. Number 81. Number 81. Number 81 is a very straightforward, very simple one. One as, as in one and one as in past tense of when. Past tense of when. I'm going to change this marker. Just give me one second. Because I think it's dying. Just give me one second. I'm not. I haven't gone anywhere. But let's try the different one. See if it's a little bit darker. And if this one is also more open. Then we're going to have to pay, uh, open a new one. So that was one. Number 82. Number 82. The word was moribund. I believe we learned this word in our in our vocabulary lessons. We did learn this word moribund. I don't have the index cards for those words, so I cannot tell you exactly which day we learned it. But the word actually means something that is 
dead or very or not dead but something that is very close to dying something that is very close to death that war marker that I just got rid of was not writing very well let's hope that this one is also not moribund not close to dying number 82 beat as in to beat the drums beat the drums and this beat which is a which is a which is a vegetable but they are pronounced the same way the pronunciation is the same beat that's all beat 83 so you can beat the drum or you can buy a beat this is of course is a noun and this is a word I suppose you can order to so you don't have to just beat the drums you can actually beat somebody you can actually beat someone more from that way pail is in a bucket is in a bucket that pail and this pail again the pronunciation is exactly the same of course pronunciation would have to be the same otherwise they won't qualify as homonyms that is what makes them homonyms the fact that they are pronounced in the same way even though they are two different words two different spellings two different meanings but the same pronunciation pale you don't you don't look so well you look a bit pale you don't look as rosy as usual you don't you don't have this uh, rosy uh, pinkish hue on your cheek that you usually do. You look a uh, bit, bit pale. You look a bit pale. You don't have your usual. You don't have your usual pinkish hue. Was the word? Hue means shade. You don't have this usual, your usual pinkish hue on your cheeks. Your cheeks don't look as pink as usual. They, you look a bit pale. You don't look well. Pale. Of course I look pale. I've been carrying this pale around all day. I'm tired. You see what you get when you become creative? Number 84. Number 84. Number 84 is again straightforward one. Lucky for us. Toe is in the end of your foot. Toe as in the end of your foot. And this toe. T O W. Toe. Again, they are pronounced in exactly the same way. Just toe. Nothing to it. No trick to it. Toe. Toe as in to tow you to tow a car. To tow a vehicle. If you park somewhere your car illegally. They're going to tow it away. A tow truck is going to come. It's going to tow it away. Yes, where is my car? Well, it's been towed away. Because you parked it illegally. Can't you see the sign? It says right there. It's a handicap parking. You parked in the handicap spot. You don't have any handicap permit. Of course, they're going to tow it away. The tow truck, tow truck came. Took it away. Now you have to pay the fine and the towing charges. Tow, as in, as in, as in a... Uh, Tow truck, as in a tow truck. Number eighty-five. Number eighty-five. Now this word is tricky because people pronounce it differently. The pronunciation that I'm going to deal with right now here, it, it can be pronounced as well. Or simply as whale. If you pronounce it this way, whale, then it becomes a synonym of this word, which becomes a synonym of this word, which simply means to cry. To whale. To whale. And a whale. I hear a whale wailing. Perhaps it cannot find its baby. I hear a whale wailing. Don't ask me where or when, but that's what I hear. Number 86. 
Let's squeeze 86 here because I think 86 is quite straightforward. 86 we have TEA as in T. Same exact pronunciation as this T. TE. TEE -E, as in as in to to T off in golf. When one is playing golf, one T is off and that T is the same pronunciation as this T. They are homonyms. Let's go on to 87. What do we have for 87? Something straightforward I hope. Yep, it is straightforward. Bite. Bite with a long I. You see with a long I. Bite. As in, as in the measurement of memory in the computer, in the computer memory, we measure the memories in terms of bytes. A thousand of them are called kilobytes. Then we have a megabytes. I believe megabyte is a million bytes. Then we have gigabytes. I believe that's a billion bytes. I'm not sure about it. They cannot be million and billion because million and billions are multiples of ten. And computer memories are not multiples of ten. They use binary numbers. So anyway, so we have kilobyte. Which is which is a uh, which is a uh, oh boy I got myself in let's let's do it here I'm curious we're not here to learn about I'm just curious I, I'm going to do purely out of curiosity so two to the one that's two four eight not not eight yep two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four sixty four one twenty eight 256, 256, 512, there you go, 510 is 1 kilobyte, which is not technically 1000, it's going to be 1000 and this was 512, if this is 512, then this has to be 2 times 12, which is going to be 1024, so you can see, kilobyte, byte, 1 kilobyte. Megabyte, gigabyte, and so forth. And computer, computer, computer memories are measures in bytes. What I don't know is what megabyte is. is, is I'm not going to go there right now because I'm not sure whether megabyte is just the next power, two to the eleven, or so it's a higher power. And I'm not sure about it. But then we have gigabyte, and of course these days one has computers with terabytes, which was unheard of ten years ago. But these days I have a computer sitting on my desk which has two terabytes of memories. Astounding compared to what it was 30 years ago, of course. So that's that byte, and then we have this byte. B-I-T-E. -E. Byte, as in to bite someone. Byte and byte, same pronunciation, of course. Let's go on to 88. In 88, we have S-E-N-T and S-C-N-T. And they are both pronounced they both have the same pronunciation. They both pronounce cent. Cent, as in a dollar is made up of a dollar is made up of 100 cents, and cent, as in smell, as in perfume. Cent. This, this one has. This is a nice cent. It has a nice smell. Number 89, penultimate one. This is 88. Number 89. What can we do? Number 89. Let's squeeze it right here. Number 89. Actually, let's do it on the top. There is no reason why we should squeeze it there. Let's do it properly. The reason I wanted to do it on the top is because it's a, it's a, it's a bit tricky. It's the name of a country, actually. It's the name of a country. Actually, short. It's a short, actually short for the proper name, which is Czechoslovakia. But the short form of Czechoslovakia is just this word right here, which happens to have the same pronunciation as this word, and you pronounce it simply as a Czech. Czech. Oh, 
perhaps I'm showing my ignorance right now, perhaps Czechoslovakia does not exist anymore. That was the part of the old Soviet Empire. I think these days the area is simply referred to as the Czech Republic. Yes, Czech Republic. Czech and Czech. This Czech, by the way, this spelling that you see here, this Czech has two meanings. One meaning is to put a check mark on something. And other meaning of this word Czech is the, is the, is the American English. In the US, we do not spell when we write a check. When we write a check, the British would spell it like this C H E Q U E. Check. They both have the same pronunciation C H check. Except the British spelling, British spelling is Q U E and American spelling is C K. They're both pronounced check. They both have the same meaning. That check and that check. Don't confuse the two. As I said, they have both pronunci same pronunciation. I just received a check from Czech Republic. I hope it's any good. Of course it's good. Why wouldn't it be? I was just being silly. Do you understand? Somebody gave me a check. Uh, a check. A check gave me a check. Uh -huh. Check gave me a check. As in a person from Czech Republic, as in a Polish gave me a check, or a Frenchman gave me a check, a French gave me a check, or an English gave me a check. Here you say a check gave me a check. How nice of him. The very nice one, a uh, very last one, which is also a bit tricky. So stay with me in this story. Number 90. But before we before we do the very last one, let's first learn something. C L O T H. If the word is spelled like that, if the word is spelled like this, it has the pronunciation of cloth, which simply means a piece of fabric. A piece of fabric. That's just cloth. But if you spell it with C-L-O-T-H-E-S, it has an entirely different pronunciation. This is not a piece of piece of fabric. This is what you put on. Put your clothes on. Put your clothes on. Clothes. K L O. Put your clothes on. And that clothes has the same pronunciation as this clothes. Please close the door. Please close the door. I want to put my clothes on. Please close the door. I want to put my clothes on. This clothes, they have the same pronunciation. This is clothes. This is cloth. So don't confuse cloth, a piece of fabric. It's not something you put on. It's just a piece of fabric. It's just what you buy at the fabric shop. You buy some cloth. Do you understand? Uh, or a piece of cloth to, to wipe something. As in a clothes, which is, which is uh, cut and, and tailored and so forth. Do you understand? Clothes. That was it for today. I know it was probably a very long video, but that's what it is. I wanted to cover up to 90 so that we can do in the last video tomorrow in part 10. Today was a part 9 of the 10. In the part 10, we can do the last 10 from 91 through 100. Okay? Bye now.